this is our M1917 tank. This tank, the American tank version, was a modification of the French tank, which was an F-17. Cole Palin, back in the day, blew up the first engine. And he did that because one of the weak links of this tank was called a conical clutch. And they tended to stick. So one winter, Cole Palin had nothing to do. The clutch was stuck, so they ran it up against a tree and kept giving it throttle as he was trying to push in on the clutch. So unfortunately, he over the engine, and the engine literally blew up and cut itself in half. So he took that engine out, put another boot engine in, which are very rare. So when they modified it, whoever brazed it, the brazing went, all the oil came out while it was running, and it started to destroy that engine. So then that engine came out, and it sat for a long period of time. So then Bill Gordon, who was basically working by himself, you know, after it's sitting a while, he said, well, we should at least have it running. So we put a little Chevette engine in it with an automatic transmission because it didn't have reverse. And, and it ran, but the problem was the tank is designed to only go five and a half miles an hour. Back then, the tank isn't thought of as the way it is now. It's basically something to supplement the infantry as it would go forward. So they figured five miles an hour, that's about as fast as a person walks. And that's what it was used for. But the thing is, with the uh, Chevette engine, once it got going, it went a lot faster than five miles an hour. So it tended to wear things out a lot. And so the project started about three years ago. And luckily, we have a lot of talented people around here. So people like Mike DiGiacomo, Matt Hewer, they made uh, new bushings for the trucks. Ken Cassins did the welding on any of the welding you see, because we had to get new steel plates for all the sides and everything. So we had to modify them so parts that we couldn't get cut out the old parts to adapt it to the new parts and weld them in. The other main person as far as getting this restored is George Yance. Because what I, I did want to do is put another conical clutch in. Back in the day, that was the weak link, was the conical clutch, because what it tended to do is grab all at once. And what would happen was the transmission would take the, the load from that. So what would happen, and what they ended up doing, is they put straps on the, on the transmission, because the transmission was starting to crack. The case was starting to crack. So it would put straps on it to keep it from cracking. So what I wanted to do was put an automotive clutch in it. And so George Yance gave us the parts we needed. What I did was I took the two boot engines that were shot, and I made one that worked. And that's what's in here now. And then once the engine was, was going all right, then Corey and I got to work getting the tank apart, which was no easy task because a lot of stuff was just frozen solid. In fact, uh, one of the main pieces on here, this has a suspension system, which because it had sat on the field so long, it was frozen up. So there was no suspension at all, which you can imagine, a seven-ton tank, how badly it rusted had to be for it not to go up and down. And Corey and I, on each side, we worked like three days on each side. We ran it the first time, what, about two months ago, I think? And surprisingly, it ran really well. It's, it's, things worked out initially very well. So now, unfortunately with the pandemic, we can't get much done, but corey has been putting all the detailed things back on it. And what we're gonna do is, um, the emblem that's gonna go here, they always had an emblem here on each side of the tank. So the mascot will be Mike Spandau, but it'll be from the 345th Tank Battalion. So we're hoping, and probably in about another month, we'll have it running regularly, and then we'll put that off to the side and we'll bring in the fire truck to restore that. 